Right now, construction is booming again. We've got a, an economic revival occurring, and um, the construction industry is dying for skilled labor. And so we tell our kids, hey, if you can show up on time, you can pass a drug test, you can work with your hands, and you know how to read a tape measure, you know, there are people who are dying to put you to work. On this two-acre site at Lincoln High School in Stockton, you'll see teenagers engaged in just about every aspect of construction, from computer-aided design to the actual building of structures. This group is practicing how to build a shed that they'll recreate at an upcoming construction competition. So that intersecting wall is going to come in here and it's going to join right along in here, and this needs to extend over three and a half. David DeBacco is an instructor at the Engineering and Construction Academy at Lincoln High. Built in collaboration with nearly 100 industry partners, the academy prepares students for jobs right out of high school or a path to higher education. We focused on uh, four different career paths, um, the architecture, drafting, and engineering and design. Um, and a lot of those students are going to be students that are going to matriculate to four-year institutions. And we have uh, construction technology. It's all your flat work and rough framing. They'll go to work in carpenters' union. They're going to go to work in the laborers' union. Um, some of them may not go union. Some of them may work for themselves or non-union shops. We have mechanical construction also. And we have uh, the woodworking and millwork program. It truly is a model program for not only the state but the country. And, and this is what we need to do in the high schools to provide our kids with great opportunities so they can be gainfully employed and get a short piece of pipe, and then you need a 90, okay? Academy founder yeah, Jeff Wright got, wanted to create real job opportunities for youth in Stockton, a city hit hard by the recession. Okay, good. Yeah, that looks good, guys. The Academy opened in 2010 with major funding from a California Career Technical Education grant. I wish every kid could go to college, but the reality and the numbers bear it out, it's just not gonna happen. There's $1.3 trillion in college debt right now, and there's more college debt than there is a credit card debt. And we need to focus on getting our kids a job. A lot of our kids start out in the 20, 22, 23 dollar an hour range. So it's critical to the city of Stockton to provide those kinds of high paying wage jobs. It's a win-win for everybody. Recent graduates of the program can attest to the high wages they're earning straight out of school. I'm 18 and I'm making $23.50. And in July I get my $2 raise. And then for going to back to school, I get uh, an additional no raise. I can max out around $50, $60 an hour. I don't see it as a job, I see it as a career. I'm gonna be doing this for a while. I think that the, the, the huge misnomer for construction is that it's low paying jobs. I mean, think about what's required to build, you know, say the Bay Bridge. From the architect to the engineer to the divers to everybody that's involved in that project, there's a lot of really skilled um, individuals with a lot of talent in there and those are really high paying careers. I looked at a lot of high schools and so did my mom and as soon as I found out this place had an engineering and construction academy, it was my dream to come here. Randolph plans to major in electrical engineering at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Everything he does here is geared toward his career plans, even making these birdhouses. This kind of gives me a chance to work with, work with my hands and kind of get my hands in what I really need to do. So though it's not the same thing, it kind of just gives me an idea of what I'm going to be doing in the future. Emily also has an eye on the future with plans to join the Iron Workers Union. Her experience at Lincoln has given her the confidence to enter a male-dominated field. I'm used to being the only girl and I'm kind of like more of like a tomboy so like I kind of get along with the guys and they're really nice to me and so like I really like it here. We firmly believe that women and girls should have the same opportunities as the guys and if they can go out and do the job they should get the same pay as the guys. Teachers recognize not all 500 students taking classes in the academy will go on to work in construction or engineering fields, but many do learn valuable life lessons. When I first came here, I've never used a nail, like, because my family was just like, oh, you know, just, it's fine, just leave it. But then coming here, I learned how to use a drill. I learned how to use, like, um, screws and all that. We get to use tools like skill saws, hammers, we get to nail things, like it's different from woodshop because woodshop we just like get to cut things and that's it. Here we get to build things, like we got to build a shed and everything. Alberta.
Alberto is part of the Lincoln High team that's competing in the 32nd annual Design Build Competition put on by the Sacramento Regional Builders Exchange. The event draws more than 300 high school students who get just two days to build a structure of their choice, such as a gazebo, a shed, or a tiny house. On the second day of competition, Alberto is feeling positive about Lincoln High's progress. So yesterday, we, we pretty much started from scratch, built the floor, built all the walls, we started putting rafters on. Today, we pretty much finished off the roof, put trim on, put shingles on the roof, ridge caps. It's just a small house, so it has like two windows and a door. It's, it's different, like it's different compared to everyone else that's here. We've got several schools that are, that are building tiny houses. The program that the kids are building for this time around, the tiny houses actually go to provide housing for homeless veterans. All the materials are donated for the building of their structures, and then they get to keep the structures afterwards. And in some cases, some schools have already pre-sold the sheds to existing buyers. Some of them will go back and will auction them off. Some of the sheds are donated for other programs. We have uh, one school that's building some storage sheds that will be going to the Folsom Zoo. But the nice thing is, if the schools do take it and auction it off or get money from the selling of the sheds, those monies go back to buying materials that they use in their shop programs throughout the course of the year. As the students work, judges make the rounds to score each structure. There are 23 schools represented at the competition, and organizers hope that students from at least a few of those schools will walk away with new career ideas. For every five journeymen that retire, there's only one apprentice entering into the trades, and so we're really getting to the point where it's going to be a critical situation. It's really a wonderful middle-class career that is available to kids who don't go on to college. Construction is a hard job. It's energy consuming. You're really tired at the end of the day. I think I could do it. Like if I really wanted to be a carpenter, like I think I could pull it off. Yeah, and then I get to see what I do. It's not like me writing something or like reading something. It's like I did this with my hands and boom, it's there. All of the students here have something tangible they can be proud of, but especially Lincoln High, which was awarded best of show at the end of the competition. Santa!